it's right close to your mouth like that. Excuse me? What's your first name? Chris. Chris, even when you're not flying, keep your um, feet on the rotor pedals. Okay. I turn, I'm adjusting the squelch. Like now, am I too loud for you? Uh, I a little bit. How's this? A little bit better? Better. Yeah, okay. One, two, three. I'm just going to check all the controls, forward and back. Oh. Okay. Good. Yeah, you might have to bend your knees a little more. Uh, Glencoe traffic, Mall 347, departing 1-2, Glencoe, glider tow, and we'll make a left turn out after takeoff. Above the uh, turn and bank and below the end number in the middle panel is a little round black knob and you can pull that towards you. That's our air vent. Look yeah, right there. Pull it towards you. Good. Some fresh air in there. As soon as we start moving, it'll be a lot cooler. Hey, take off. Center maintain 3,200 toes. Now we're balanced on the main wheel, and this is what it should look like as we come into land also. We'll just uh, level off. We don't do a normal flare like light airplanes do. It's about 100 feet. And this is about 200 feet. So 200 feet is our decision height, and we always recite that altitude at every takeoff. Okay. Three, four, seven's up. I'm just controlling the sailplane to stay. Uh, right behind the tow plane. And you might pick a, a picture or a reference spot on the plane where to hold the glider. Okay. Uh, like keep his wheels, his main gear visible below the horizontal stabilizer. This would be a little too low. I'm going to show you where his wake is. That's his wingtip vortices. Uh -huh. So that's why we always fly a little bit higher up here. Okay. But you don't want to be so high that you can't see him. You know, you don't want to be way, way up here. You also, you don't want to be high on takeoff because uh, when he's low to the ground, you don't want to force him into the ground either. Okay. It's so nice to be up. And you can feel my feet moving on the rudders. Uh, whenever I feel the nose yaw off in one direction, I'm using the rudder to to control. Just go ahead and step on the rudders. I'll take my feet off, and you'll just see how much pressure it takes to get the nose to move left and right. Okay. Okay. Good. And forward and back would be uh, what we call pitch. I'm just going to move the stick forward, and you can see that we go down. 
and when I pull back on the stick, we go up. But it's really airspeed control. It's not up and down because you can pull back, and all you do is slow down. You won't really uh, climb. It's going to be a lot smoother after we release because right now we're going about 65 knots and um, when we release we'll be going about 45. The instrument that records the airspeed is the far left hand one with a green circle, a green arc and then a yellow arc and a red line. Okay. And it's on about 60 or 65 now. The one next to it is rate of climb and it says knots. And that's uh, one knot is 100 feet per minute. So we're climbing out at about 600 feet a minute. It's on six above zero. But when you're flying, I'm just going to have you look outside at the horizon okay. rather than focus on the instruments. But you'll notice that the wind noise gets a lot quieter when we go 20 knots slower after we let go of the tow plane. Okay. <laughs> we're about halfway up now, about 2,300 feet. Wow. Beautiful view. Oh, there's a much smoother layer of air right here. Yeah. If it gets too cool, you can close that vent that I had you open. Oh, okay. <laughs> the air feels is a lot cooler, isn't it? Yeah, it feels good, though. It does. We have a compass in the glider, but out here in Minnesota, you've got... Uh, sector lines, and they're all north, south, east, and west, so you always know what direction you're going. Oh, in. sure. And when I, whenever I do our turning exercises and stuff, you know, if you're trying to do them for an examiner or on your flight test, I try to line the glider up north and south or east and west, and that makes it a lot easier than trying to pick a heading that's off, you know, so that when he says do a 180 degree turn, you know, you'll be right on that line. Okay make things easier for you, you know. The town uh, ahead of the tow plane and to the left of it is Hutchinson. Oh, okay. See, this is uh, Highway, I guess, 22 from Glen. Glen oh. goes behind us to the left. Okay. And the airport is southeast of Glen Coast, so it's behind us. Okay. One of the first things you learn is, where are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's green. I know. <laughs> Those little uh, retention ponds that look like water treatment plant, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, part of the Pillsbury Green Giant uh, facility. They treat their own rinse water for the uh, packing plant. Oh, okay. And the packing plant is south of Highway 212. I mean, uh, south of 22, but oh. on that side of town there. Hmm. This little factory is the Nordic Track plant, right outside of town. Okay. A lot of uh, light industry and manufacturing.
you close your window just a fraction, um, it'll make less noise. The side window just slides forward and back. You know, just, yeah, it's like a, it's playing a noise right now. You could change the pitch. There you go. Uh, it'll be a little quieter. Now when I fly, uh, just for, for uh, just, just do what I do. Put your right hand on the stick, put your thumb and two fingers on the stick, and keep your right arm resting on your knee, and hold it below the grip, and that makes it a little bit more comfortable. And you just need fingertip pressure. I'm just going to wiggle the stick, and you can see that you don't need much uh, pressure. Okay. And I'm just following the tow plane. You basically, when you steer with a stick, you just point the stick where you want to go. Okay. So if you want to go to the right, move it to the right. If you want to go to the left, you move it to the left. If you want to go faster, push forward. Go ahead, just keep your hand on the stick for now and follow through with me. If you stay light, that's fine. If you get too heavy, I'll say let go or I've got the controls. Okay. When I say you have the controls, I'll take everything all my input off the stick, but I'll stay close by. Okay. Now, we're getting ready to release. We're at 5,000 feet. I want you to put your left hand on the yellow handle and pull it right now. Good. I'm going to make a right turn. You look at the rope as you pull away and make sure that you're free of it. A little knot in the rope again, I think. Okay, I'll check that when I land. And all I, I readjusted the trim a little bit because we went from a very fast 65 knot to uh, 45 knots. Okay. This is a very shallow bank. This is about a 30 degree bank. This would be about a 45 degree bank. So we usually do 45s. One reason is uh, you can get where you're going quicker than if you do a real sh if you do a real shallow turn. It takes a long time to complete the turn, and our sink rate is actually fast. Okay. If you turn quicker, you don't lose as much altitude. Oh, okay. I'll turn this way. You've got your hand on the stick. Yep. Okay, good. Doesn't even feel like we're moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just enjoy the quiet. That's uh, right over the nose. I'll level up. That's Lake Waconia. Okay. And then behind that is Lake Minnetonka. Oh, yeah. It's just a little hazy. You can't see the sky the cities today, but usually you can. Okay. There seems to be a northwest component, so I'll point the glider towards Hutch, Hutchinson, so that we don't get blown uh, downwind of our airport. Okay. When you look at the horizon and you look at, say, the black tape on the windshield, uh, the black tape should be just below the horizon line, where the sky meets the ground. Okay. Is that, you're, um, you're a different height no. than I am. <laughs> Is it above it? It's way below the way horizon Way below line. it, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about the top of the orange string? Is that at the horizon for it's you? It's below the horizon, too. Okay. As long as those are below the horizon, you're going the right airspeed. Okay. Now, if I move the nose down, using the stick. Let's hold it there. Now I'll let you look at the airspeed indicator. It's slowly going to go up to 50 knots. So if, you, if I say to you, fly at 50 knots, you're going to put the nose down to this pitch attitude. You're not going to go any further. You'll go right about here. It'll say 50 knots. Okay. But notice how long it takes to get there. Yeah. So we're, that's why we don't fly on the airspeed indicator. We just fly by pitch attitude. Oh, now, okay. Yeah. Now we're going to go back to 45. We'll put the nose back where it was. Takes a while for the airspeed to catch up. Okay. 45 is the speed that keeps us up the longest. It's the angle where the wings are going through the wind, through the air, creating a relative wind at the most efficient position. If you raise the angle, if you increase the angle by raising the nose, will be going slower and the nose will be higher and there's more drag. Okay. Okay. I'll just keep it up here for a minute and I'll let you feel the, the pre-stall aerodynamic buffet. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Now it's not going to fall off or anything. We're just flying in the buffet. All this is is turbulent air hitting the fuselage. Yeah. It's a very good trainer. It gives you a lot of warning when you're going too slow. So if you feel that, just relax back pressure. See, I've got the glider trimmed, so it's going to fly at the right airspeed, even if I take my hand off the stick. Just fly right there. Now I'm going to take my hand off the stick and just hold it right there. So there's nothing dangerous about the pre-stall buffet. It's just telling you, lower my nose, fly a little bit faster, and the buffet goes away. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now just uh, wiggle the stick around a little bit. Just get a feel. Left and right. Forward and back. Forward. Back. You can, you can be a little quicker. I just wanted you to... Oh, know. okay. <laughs> and then we'll get into actually doing something. Go ahead, forward and back. Nothing bad's going to happen. Left and right. I'm just moving the rudders so it won't side slip too much when, okay. when you move the stick. Notice that when you move the stick, I move the rudders. Okay. And that's what you'll be doing eventually. Now, lower the nose a little bit and just hold it there. You'll hear the wind noise pick up. So you're going a little bit faster. Now, as you go faster, notice you have to put more and more pressure on the stick to keep the nose where you want it to be. Okay. So there's, all, there's a couple of different signs that you're going faster. One is increased wind noise. One is nose is lower than it was before by looking at And the other is the controls get more sensitive. They get a little harder. You know, raise the nose just a little bit. A little quieter. Okay, let's do a turn. We'll make a left turn. So to your left. Just move the stick to the left. I'll take care of the rudders. Raise the nose, or add some back pressure so the nose doesn't drop. Beautiful. Just relax. Enjoy the weather. You can raise the nose a little more because like, we've picked up some speed. Now when you want to stop the turn, move the stick to the right. A little bit past neutral. A little more. Good, and lower the nose. So when you come out of the turn, the nose wants to come up. Okay. You have to add the forward pressure. Did you ever fly your friend's uh, model airplanes, or do you fly? No, that I haven't. Well, it's the same thing. As a matter of fact, people who fly model airplanes really understand how what happens. The nose wants to drop when you start the turn, and it wants to climb when you uh, come out of the turn. Okay, level the wings right here. Good. Try right turn. Look right. Back pressure on the stick. Now if you keep moving a stick to the right, it'll bank more and more. Once you get the bank you want, just go like this. Okay, now ease out of the turn. Left stick. Left rudder. Forward pressure. Beautiful. Touch. Go ahead, just practice a few more turns. Good job, raise the nose a little bit. A little more back pressure, that's it. Notice that it wants to keep going around. Mm -hmm. That's how they're designed. All airplanes will stay in the bank if you put them in the bank. Lower the nose a little bit. Forward with the stick, but neutralize the stick. Once the wings are level, you can bring the stick back here. Good job. <laughs> See, I told you you'd be flying. <laughs> Very easy. It's just, all it is is practice now. That's just a wind gust. Okay. Actually, it's a little unusual today to have gusty winds this high up. Hmm. And there's a big low pressure over... Uh, north of Michigan in Canada. Oh, okay. And it's sending down big arms of uh, winds. So when the wind gets close to the ground, we get friction, and that's why we get it. It's a little gust. Okay. Now this is what, it, uh, we don't have a thermal today, but this is what a thermal would feel like. You'd be bouncing around like this. Oh, okay. And so what you're doing is, I'll just put my hand back on the stick. You're making small adjustments the whole time. 
to compensate for what the wind is doing. So you're going to get a real advanced lesson because it's <laughs> a lot more difficult than when the air is smooth. Okay. Hey, I'm I'm going to hold the stick for a minute. You can keep your hand on it, but just go ahead and move the rudders. Move the left rudder. Step on the left rudder with your toe. Okay. Step on the right rudder and release the left rudder. I'm going to do it a little more with you. And notice that when I, when I turn left, and I'll turn left just to show you, the left rudder, it's almost like I'm leading with the left rudder when I turn, just to keep the nose going in the same direction. When I roll out, feel that right rudder? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> I was talking to that other guy, and he was saying yesterday he was having more fun than the, the riders because it was so bumpy, he was having a blast. I know. Just remember, it's just a little more difficult to fly because, you know, you're just getting used to the controls, mm -hmm. and you're trying to hold pitch attitude, and all of a sudden the wing goes up, and you said, I didn't do that. You know? <laughs> sure. Okay, make, we'll make a right turn together. Here, lead with the right rudder. Good. Start rolling out. Lead with the left rudder to roll out. That's a little forward pressure now. Now do a little turn like that to the left. Lead with the left rudder. You're still using the stick. Now when you want to roll out, lead with the right rudder to roll out. Right stick. A little forward pressure. A little more right rudder. Notice how the nose wants to go sideways if you don't. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate. This is no rudder. The nose goes off in the opposite direction. If I try to bank to the right, the nose goes to the left. So the rudder is actually controlling yaw, a very strange word. <laughs> okay, you've got the controls. Okay. <laughs> Slide a little bit. With the rudder when you turn, and when you want to roll out, lead with the opposite rudder. with the right rudder. Good. When you roll out, lead with the left rudder. A little forward pressure. See how the nose comes mm -hmm. up? Why is that, do you think? Increased speed or? Increased lift. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because when the wings are level, they have more lift than when they're at an angle. Oh, when okay. When they're banked. We're taking away some lift so that we can turn like this so the nose wants to drop. Now when you level the wings, both wings are perpendicular or parallel to the earth. The lift vector is perpendicular, so you've got more lift. The nose wants to come up like this. So you have to uh, maintain speed. Okay. You can, you can sacrifice a little bit of lift to keep maintain your airspeed. It's a, it's a constant exchange between airspeed and altitude. Got the controls. I'm just helping a little tiny bit with the rudders if okay. you need it. Okay. And when it's gusty like this, I do use the rudders quite a bit. You'll notice that if the left wing drops, I'll I'll pick it up with the right rudder a little bit. Okay. You know what? We're climbing. I'm going to take the controls and we'll turn. Okay. The way I could tell is for a moment the variometer there, the second dial from the left, was going up. Okay. Now we're going down. Now it's going down at four, not four hundred feet a minute. So that means that we're in the sinking air, surrounding the thermal. Fly more this way. Off to the right, uh, south of town, is a little golf course and the water tower that looks like a golf tee. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All these landmarks become important because oh, gosh, yeah. you, you know you want to know where you are. Right? Yeah, you can get lost <laughs> real easy. <laughs> My first impression when I started flying here years ago was, well, it's all farms. How am I going to find the runway? Sure. And the runway is straight ahead of us, just a little bit to the right. Okay. Yep. And it's at an angle to Highway 212. Yep. And it's between Glencoe, which is to our right. This little town just off the left nose is called Plato. Okay. Glencoe traffic, glider 118 is uh, approaching the field from the northwest to 1,800 feet AGL. Glencoe. Hi, Deb.
All right, I'm going to turn here. Put your hand on the stick if it's not already. Okay, it's on. Little bank. A little bit of a thermal here. Lake Elmo traffic, SSI 89084, is about uh, five miles to the east. Uh, we'll be circling around, entering a left downwind runway 1 at uh, Lake Elmo. Around a thousand feet above the ground, I'll start entering the pattern. Okay. But we're still plenty high. We're about 1,600 feet. But I did fly closer back to the airport, so that the point is, as you're losing altitude, come back. Okay. Make sure you've got a place to land. Okay. Hold this heading here. You've got the controls. Use plenty of rudder. Bank it to the right. Good. Circling here, just keep this in a turn. Okay. Raise the nose a bit. And unbank it just a little bit. When you do, use a little bit of left top rudder. That's it. Good. And when you want to come out of the turn, stop the turn here, level the wings, left rudder. Left stick. Redwing traffic, Turkey 440 is on a Okay, I'll take the stick. Okay. Good. Now we're going to do a counterclockwise pattern, a left-hand pattern around the runway and come into land to the northwest. So this is the first turn. It's called the crosswind leg. Glencoe traffic, glider 118 is left crosswind for runway 30, Glencoe. Lake Elmo traffic, Cessna 89084, uh, directly south of the active uh, runway 31, Lake Elmo. Now I'm going to start flying 50, and we fly uh, faster than minimum sink speed, we fly at best glide speed, and then add a wind component. So when we land, we're, we're going to be going about 60 knots again. Okay. And that's so that you have more control over the glide. Okay. And if you want to, you've been very light on the stick. If you want to, just keep your hand on the stick and just be sure that I can move it. Okay. You can just follow through with what I do. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the brakes here. I'm going to check them, make sure they work. They do. So now I'm going to plan my approach using about half air brakes. Right now I'm going 55 and I'll speed up just a little bit when we come in. Again, because it's windy and gusty. Okay. And and, if, and speed equals lift, so you want to go faster and have more maneuverability. Okay. Glencoe traffic, glider 118 is left base for a 30 Glencoe. You can always go by the sound, you know, as to how fast you're going. Okay. Now, normal approach, I would just bring it in and land. What I'm going to do is I'm going to level off above the runway and then glide up to the end. Okay. Gliders can land very short, but I'm going to do what's called landing long. So instead of touching down on the wheel, this would be our normal approach. And normally then I would just level off and we'd immediately touch down. But I'm not. I'm going to close the brakes. I'm going to just you know, stay in ground effect and and fly right up to the end of the runway. Okay. It's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it also gives you a ground rush. It gives you a feel for what it's like to be so close to the ground. Oh, sure. I'm keeping the nose the nose off the ground because once it comes down you'll feel a little thump okay. right about here like that. 
<laughs> so you can get the main wheel on the ground, and then I start adding back pressure with the elevator to okay. keep the, uh, nose up. The, the nose up. You know, you can really you can taxi and everything when you're on the ground by using the rudder pedals. Okay. Okay, just pull sideways on that black strap, and you fasten your seat. Give you some headroom here. Thank you. Thank you.